Hi, this is Ann from Design Bundles, and today I'm going to show you how to use Image Trace in Adobe Illustrator to vectorize your hand drawing or lettering. So when I do this, I usually use black magic marker on white paper because Image Trace really works well with high contrast like black and white. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to take this black marker and I'm just going to draw um, around this mug to get a pretty circular area. Doesn't have to go all the way around. In fact, I don't really plan on using it that way anyway. All right, and now I'm just going to draw in some little laurels. And they also don't have to be perfect either. You can always um, clean those up in Illustrator. And I'll just speed the video up so you don't have to watch this whole thing. I'm going to go over that line so it's just a little bit thicker. And the whole thing about doing hand-drawn work is that it's okay for it not to be perfect. I actually like the way it looks a little better if it is more whimsical. All right, now I'm just going to do the other side. Now we'll start with this way. On this side, I'm leaving the leaves open because um, there's an easy way to fill them in in Illustrator. I'll show you that. And I'm trying to get the sides to match, but of course it's not going to be perfect. And this is only a tutorial anyway, so you'll probably want to take a little time to get them a little better than I'm doing right now. Okay, and I'm going to go back over this line again on this side. Okay. At this point, if you have a scanner, you'll want to scan it, or you can just take a picture with your phone. Since I have a scanner, I'm just going to go ahead and scan it, but if you are going to take a photo, you want to have good light, so try to take it near a window or get some light on it somehow. Um, also, try to get your phone parallel to the table if you can, so that your image is perfectly flat. Okay, I'm going to scan my document, so we'll go to File, Import, Images from Device. And I'll wait for my scanner to warm up. And I'm going to change this to black and white um, at 300 DPI. And you might have some different options here, but those work pretty well for me. And then we'll scan. All right, so now we're in Photoshop. And the first thing I want to do is crop this. So I'm going to hit C on my keyboard and then pull these handles in towards the graphic. And then we'll just hit return. Okay, and I'm going to hit Command-0 to zoom in fully. Then I'm going to get my levels up with Command-L or Control-L on a PC. We'll pull this little handle over to about right here on the mountain, that little mountain. And then we'll pull this one over here. And what that's doing is making all the blacks blacker and the whites whiter. And then this middle one, you can kind of change where that tone is. So I'm going to put it right over here and we'll say, okay. Okay. Our image is ready to bring into Illustrator now. So I'm going to save it. We'll go to file, save as. And then we'll just save it as a JPEG. I'm just going to leave it as scan one and we'll save and say, okay. All right. Now I'll go out to where I save that scan one and I'll just click and drag it onto my illustrator icon. All right. I'll use my hand tool by hitting the space bar and move this over a little bit. And then I'll hit V on my keyboard to get my selection tool and just click on it. Now we can come up here to image trace and what I usually do with image trace, I'll just click this button and see what happens. Sometimes it does a great job and sometimes it doesn't. So the next thing we'll do is come over here to this little icon. Um, this is the same as going to window image trace, which is right here. And this gives us all the options for image trace. Okay, so I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard and then just draw a box around this to see how well it's doing. Okay, and it's a little rough, so let's try some different options inside Image Trace. If we move the threshold down, it will capture less of the black. And if we move it up, it'll capture more of the black. So you can kind of see it changing on my screen. I think I want it a little bit less, like right here. 
Okay, and then the number of paths, if you put it at a high number, it's really accurate. So you see a lot of the bumps and little lines that I made with my pen. Um, if you put it at a low amount though, it'll smoothen it out some. I think I want it a little more accurate than that. All right, so that's pretty close to what I want. Noise also has to do with the accuracy. So if you put it down really low at one, you'll see a lot smoother design. And then if you put it all the way at 100, it'll be rougher. It'll follow the edges more closely. So I'm gonna put it down here pretty low at eight pixels. Okay. For the method, I always use the first one, which is a budding. It kind of creates puzzle pieces out of your design. We only really have one color here, so it's not going to matter. But if you have more than one color, it'll create kind of puzzle pieces instead of having overlap. I always, for this part, the create, I always create fills and not strokes. I've tried the strokes several times, but it always gives me weird results. So I always go with fills here. And then I always have snap curves to lines checked. I really like to ignore white. So all the white you see here will just go away. Otherwise, you'll have a big white piece that goes all the way out to the edges. And then you'll have the black in here. So we'll ignore white. Okay, and that is it for the image trace. But there's one more step that you have to do to be able to get paths in this document. And that's to go up here to expand. So we'll hit that now. You can also hit Command E on your keyboard or go to Object Expand or Control E on a PC that is. Okay, and now you can see we have all these little paths in here. So because I didn't do a great job of um, drawing this in the first place, it's going to be pretty rough. Uh, I kind of have a shaky hand, so if you have a really smooth hand, you won't get all these little bumps that I have in here. But I want to show you a way to clean this up. And I always do this with the pencil, with the pencil and the smooth tools. You can get to the pencil by hitting the letter N on your keyboard. And then you'll want to just start along the edge of a line and end up going the same way on the same line, if that makes sense. Okay, so to show you what I mean, I'll just start here on this line, and I don't want that little piece right there, so I'm gonna come out here, and then I'll just end up going the same direction on that same line, and that just redraws the line. And then um, you can also hold Option while you have the pencil tool selected, which will give you the smooth tool. It toggles to the smooth tool. So I'm going to go over some of this a little bit. Just go over the lines you have and it'll smooth them out. I'll go over this piece a few times with my smooth tool and here too. I'll move down here and this one's really rough so I'm going to smooth that out with my smooth tool. So this is just holding Option or Alt on a PC while being on the pencil tool. One thing that Image Trace doesn't do a good job of is getting a sharp corner where you have a sharp corner in your drawing. So one way to fix this is to get your A tool. Um, if you hit A on your keyboard, that'll bring you to your direct selection tool, which is right up here. Um, you can click off and then click right on that line and get a point. So let me zoom in a little bit here. I've got this point selected. It's blue. All the other little points that aren't selected are white. So I'm just going to click and drag up here. If I zoom out, you can see that now it's made a sharper point. And now I'm going to take this one and drag that down. So now we have the point that we want from our drawing, but we have this little overlap here. So to get rid of that, you can come down here to the Pathfinder. You can also go to Window, Pathfinder, and get there that way. Um, and then choose the first shape mode, which is Unite. And that will just cut out that little piece. Basically, it's taking all the pieces of the black that overlap and making one shape out of them. So we can do that here too. I'm gonna use my A tool, the direct selection tool, grab this little point and pull it up, grab this one and pull it over, and then do the shape builder unite. Okay, so we have our graphic 
and I'm not going to take the time to smooth all of that out. Basically, a good rule of thumb is if you can get your original drawing with your uh, magic marker to be really clean, you'll get a much cleaner result here. Now I want to show you how to get all of these little white parts to be black, an easy way to do that. So I'm going to get my group selection. I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for that, which is G. You probably will not have that set up, but if you want to set it up, you can go to edit, keyboard shortcuts, and set it up there. But anyway, that brings us to the group selection tool, which is here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just draw a little square around part of the black, and then we'll hide that with Command-3 or Control-3 on a PC. And now we have only the center showing because we hid that outline. So now with my group selection tool, I'm going to just draw a box around all that. Hold shift, draw another one around these parts and then delete. And now we can unhide with option command three. That got rid of all those little center pieces. All right, so now our hand drawing is ready for text inside. We can rotate this around with the R tool. And we could just add some text in here and we've got our design ready to go. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, just hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time a new video comes out. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.